Hey, thanks for dropping by and checking out this message. These lessons come from our Sunday gatherings at Victory Christian Church in Franklin, Indiana. Our 5th through 8th graders meet at 9 or 10.30 a.m. and our high schoolers meet from 6 to 8 p.m. If you find that this content brings value to your life, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell so that you can be notified when we upload our next message. Our hope is that this video brings more clarity into your life as to who God is and what He wants for you in light of who Jesus is and what He's done for you. Enjoy and have a great day. Like, like, I don't know if you're like me, but if you're like me, then you think, I don't need an instruction manual, I can figure it out, right? I'm, I'm a smart guy, I can do it on my own. So when I was in middle school, actually, my, uh, my parents, I was like, it was actually, I was in elementary school, it was right before, it was like right as The Phantom Menace came out, like Star Wars Episode One back in 1999, and, uh, and they re-released all these like new Lego sets with it. So I remember dumping out all the Legos because I got this brand new, like original X-Wing. It was Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. And, and I, so I, I dump out all the pieces and I'm like, I'm going to put this together. And I start looking at things and I go, well, this little piece looks like the little like gun that goes in. So I'll put it here on this, what looks like a wing. And then I start putting pieces together. And then before I know it, like I have this like half looking kind of wing thingy. And, and then the rest of the Lego is just there in a pile. I'm like, uh, well, maybe, maybe I should actually look at the instructions after all. So, so the, re the reality is that, you know, it's, it's nearly impossible to figure out exactly the way that something is supposed to go together without some kind of instructions or guidance. Like, take, take the game you guys played, for example, the Play-Doh stuff that you guys did. Like, it, it was kind of cool to watch you all try to put it together, but what if, what if I had given you all an instruction manual on exactly how to do each one to make it look awesome? Like, would that have helped you? Or would it have taken away your creative juices? Because we like to be creative, and we like to do things on our own. And for some things, like, you know, putting together Play-Doh and shapes that match the screen, that's super fun. But when it comes to other things, like, I don't know, school or math homework, it's really nice to have the instructions to know exactly how to do it so you don't end up with the wrong answer. And you know, so eventually I, I put together, I, I got the instruction manual, I started putting things together and, and piece by piece, I remember it took me days to get this thing exactly right. Because I would do it for a while, I'd get bored, I'd go away, I'd come back and then, and then I'd work for a little longer and then I'd be like, well, what is this piece actually like? And then I would look around and like, I don't see this piece, but there's a picture of this piece. You guys ever done that, putting together something? They're like, there's nothing that looks like that picture, right? But eventually I did it, and, and it looked something like this. And it was pretty dang awesome. It was like this, it was like the most intricate Lego thing I'd ever done. Now it looks like, you know, kind of pathetic because it's not super complicated by the looks of that picture. But I remember it like being like, you know, nine or 10 years old, that was like extremely difficult for me to try to put together all by myself. Uh, but I was proud of myself. I finally did it. And I, I never played with it after that because I was afraid I would break it. So I just like left it there on my dresser and it was like a little display and it was pretty sweet. But sometimes when it comes to following God, when it comes to having faith, when it comes to walking in the shadow step of Jesus himself, it, it can be a little bit difficult to know, am I doing this right? A lot of times we look around to the people around us and we think, well, they've, they've got it figured out. Uh, they, they seem like they're really into it. They seem like they have all the answers. They seem like they never do anything wrong. They seem like their lives are perfect. And then in the meantime, we're not actually seeing what's going on in their hearts. We don't know what their motives are. We, we, we don't know if they're just faking it till they make it or, or if, you know, what they have is truly genuine. And the more you get to know somebody, the more genuine you, you learn how genuine their lives really are or, or lack thereof. But it takes that time. It takes spending time getting to know people. And the same is true with God. So in this whole series, I, I'm super excited about this because it's something that I think we all resonate with at certain seasons of our lives. For some of you, you wrestle with this now. For others of you, you'll wrestle with it later. And for others of you, and actually for most of us, it'll be a cycle that we, we get it right for a while. And then we feel like we're walking in step with Christ. And then, and then something will happen or maybe nothing will happen. And we feel like, what happened? I, I, don't, feel, I don't know what happened, but I don't feel like I'm connected with God anymore. And so in this series, we're going to be talking what, what it looks like to actually connect with God. And sometimes we just need to go back to the basics. 
We need, we need to go back to the beginning, remember the basics of what it means to actually follow Jesus. And, and so today, that, that's kind of day one of that. This is going to be a five-week series. We're going to be going through it uh, this week and then all through the month of August. And it's a perfect time because you guys are all going back to school. So you're getting back in routines. You're starting things back up. And, and Whiteland, is there anybody in Whiteland in here that's going back to school like this week? Oh, well... Well, I'm sorry, you, your, your summer break's pretty much over. But for the rest of you, you have like two weeks, right? Franklin people, how many of you go to Franklin? You got like a couple more weeks left. You, you got a little more time to cram in that summer homework before your first class. And, and do you guys have some more homework or is that just high school? Just high school, you have summer homework? I had summer homework in middle school, so consider yourself lucky if you don't. But, uh, so you guys got a little bit more time this summer, but See, the series, I think, is coming just in time because you're going to get back in that routine. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to have this opportunity to set new habits. And, you know, it, it takes 21 days to create a habit. So this series is longer than that. Usually our series are three weeks, which is 21 days. But, but this one's longer. You're going to have more time to actually get this habit ingrained of how to actually connect with God and make it a part of your lifestyle that you are connected with Christ. And not just like a lip service thing or emotions thing or something you feel bad about every Sunday because you're like, oh crap, I'm not doing that, right? And hopefully this, this series will help with that. Because let's be honest, when it comes to our faith, there are a lot of times when we just simply aren't feeling it. And I know, I know you guys have, have, are, have experienced that because I've experienced that. And I, I remember experiencing that, I think for the first time when I was in middle school because I grew up in church and so all through elementary school, I felt really connected to God. I didn't feel like... There's this disconnect, but as I got older, as, I, as my life got crazier and busier, I felt like, you know, there's just times I'm not feeling it. I don't want to read my Bible. I don't want to be quiet and pray. I just want to, like, put some headphones in and just be by myself. Or I want to go hang out with friends or, or whatever it is. And, and I'm just not feeling it. And so sometimes we have to get ourselves there. We, we, have to, we have to learn how to connect with God, even those dry spells. And even those seasons where we don't feel like connecting with God. We don't feel like doing much of anything. And, and you know, sometimes we, we have to push ourselves to, you know, what's, what's next? And the reality is there are so many ways to connect with God. But, but we're going to be talking about one today. And, and if, if you feel like you've... Like God is mad at you because you're, you're not connecting with him. Or if you feel like he's disappointed in you some way. Like I just want to stop right now and say this is not going to be a like five steps to get closer to God so he doesn't hate you. It's going to be a five tips to help your relationship with God be better. Because all of us are at different spots. All of us are at different spots and we all are striving for our next step, whatever that may be. We all are striving to be closer with Jesus. We, we want to live our lives in the way that he created us to. So this isn't going to be a big guilt trip series. This is, this is just, you know, we all got to start somewhere. We, it, maybe, maybe you've been doing this a while, but maybe, maybe things aren't quite habit. I don't know. But God's hope isn't that we all connect with him in the same way because we are all different. His hope is that we'll simply keep trying and keep showing up. You know, in the Bible, there's a guy uh, who goes by the name, uh, his, his name is John Mark, but we call him Mark. And he wrote the Gospel of Mark. And so he, got, he hung out with a lot of guys like, uh, like Barnabas and, and Paul and Peter and legends of the faith. And he hangs out with them. And he, he actually writes his gospel mostly from the stories he heard from Peter himself. As Peter spent his life with Jesus. And he writes them down in his gospel. And, and you know, Jesus was teaching to the crowds like he generally did. And about like, like the way we study a lot of times. But as, as he's teaching, there's a lot of the religious leaders that are just, they don't like him. Because he's bringing a crowd and, and he speaks with authority. And so, like, all the other religious leaders feel like they're losing their voice. You ever feel like you've lost your voice to somebody else in your class? It's like, it, it, you're like, hey, that's that's... That's my job, right? Or, or like, oh, that's, that's my thing. Like, and somebody else kind of steals your thunder. This is what the religious leaders are feeling about Jesus. And so they're, they're trying to come up with all these questions to trap him. Because they know that, you know, if you follow the, the, the rules and you do everything right, you follow all the laws, then that's how you get closer to God. And there's, there's some truth in that. But that's not the whole story. And so they didn't like that Jesus wasn't addressing all the things that they wanted him to address. And so they start 
trying to trap him and asking him all these questions. And, and Jesus answered a lot of them pretty well. And so then they're like, okay, here's one. Because we'll, we'll, we'll see what he says to this. And, and this guy asks him, you know, what is the greatest commandment? Right? What, what's the greatest commandment? Think it, think it whatever Jesus says, it, it's not going to be exactly right. Because there are so many commandments. And they can just debate and be like, oh, well, what about this? Oh, well, what, isn't this more important? And they, they, they think that you're just going to trap them up here. But Jesus says this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And Jesus didn't say the greatest commandment is, you know, worship. It's not prayer. It's not just obeying all the rules. Who can do the best job of obeying all the rules? And, and you know, if... Breaking the rules is lava. Don't jump in the lava, right? It, it just, just, he doesn't say that. He says one simple thing. Love. What's the greatest commandment? It's love. In other words, the, the most important thing that we can do in order to connect with God is simply to love him. And, you know, so what, what's that look like, you know? with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. He's addressing all the different areas of your life. Your thoughts, your actions, your words, everything. Everything about you. Don't compartmentalize. Love God with everything. We have to have a relationship with Him. I mean, think back to your, to your friendships, right? When you spend time and energy with friends, and, and like maybe it's somebody that you have somebody that you would consider your best friend. Maybe you have somebody that like you just you love to spend time with them. Whenever school's over, you like to hang out together. Whenever you, you are in extracurriculars, you like to do the same thing so that you can spend time together. And maybe you don't do those things so you can spend time together, but it's a really great perk, and maybe that's how you became really good friends. But imagine like you you've been in this place, right? Where you feel like a little out of step with that person, like whether you got in a fight about something or, or maybe just like you just haven't had the opportunity to hang out in a while. And so you just kind of feel like you're on different levels. Well, what do you do to fix that? Oftentimes, it's spending more time with them. Because when you reconnect, when you spend time with somebody, you're able to get back on the same page. You're, you're able to, to like feel connected again. You're like, oh yeah, we are good friends. I miss this, this is good. You know, I'm sorry about whatever, or, or I, I, I wish we could hang out more. I'm sorry I've been busy, or whatever it is. And when you spend time with that person, you, you feel reconnected. You feel back in step with them. And the same is true with God. You know, spending time with God is a way to connect with God. And that's, that's, the, simple, that's the simplest part of today's message. It's just, just step one, beginner's guide to connecting with God. Spend time with Him. And that looks different for everybody. Right? We, we're all wired differently. So for some of us, that means, you know, actually sitting down with a quiet time and flipping through the pages of Scripture. For some of us, that's, that's blocking out all the other voices. And that's just, just sitting in silence and praying. For some of us, it's a combination of those things. For some of us, it's nature walks. It, it, you, you just walk around, you get your blood pumping, you, you breathe fresh air, and you're just able to think clearer. And you're to focus on the right things. Maybe for some of you, it's putting in headphones and listening to worship music and just like thinking about life and thinking about God and thinking about, you know, what might he have in store for your life and just dreaming with him. You know, it's, it's different for everybody, but spending time with God is a way to connect with God. The more time you actually spend, the more you show up and spend time with God, the more you'll eventually see your relationship grow. Maybe for some of you, the most encouraging time of the week is Sunday mornings because we get to worship together as a community. We get to study His Word. We get to actually see how that's applied and lived out in our lives. And maybe this is the highlight. Maybe this is where you connect most with God. And that would be awesome. I hope that's true for you. But spending time with God, set apart uh, uh, from anything else, is how we connect with God. That's the first place to go. For in our relationship with God... Think through your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. Repeat. Heart, soul, strength, mind. Heart, soul, strength, mind. Heart, soul, strength, mind. What, what's going on? What are your motives? What's in your heart? Well, who do you belong to? What's in your soul? Is it, is it what you want to do or is it what God wants to do? 
Is your life his or is your life trying, are you trying to control everything yourself? Your mind, what are your thoughts like? As you go down to bed each night, what are you thinking about? What's going on in your head? And with all your strength, it means with everything in your power and everything that you do, are you, your actions showing who you belong to? Heart, soul, mind, and strength, repeat. Heart, soul, mind, and strength, repeat. Spending time with God is a way to connect with God. So as you guys get ready to go in your small groups, what's one way that you can spend time with God this week? What's one way that you can spend time with God this week? I want you to think about that question. We'll talk about it with our groups, and, and then we'll be done for this week. So would you guys bow your heads and, and pray with me? Hey, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and make sure you're subscribed so you're notified when we upload future videos. Have a great day.